makes you think she is a witch? Well, she turned me into a newt. A newt. I got better. This clip from Monty Python and the Holy Grail is an example of a false analogy because the crowds come up with illogical assumptions based on similarities between two very different things. Whether she is a witch. Tell me, what do you do with witches? <laughs> and what do you burn apart from witches? More witches! Wood! So, why do witches burn? The crowds conclude that since witches and wood both burn, the witches must be made of wood. And the crowds also make the faulty conclusion that if wood and ducks both float, then if the woman weighs the same as a duck, then she is made of wood, therefore making her a witch. As we know, these conclusions are false and not based upon any logical fact. Out of stone? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, cool. Uh, does a wood sink in water? No, 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 it floats. It floats. Throw her into the pond. <laughs> what also floats in water? Bread. Apples. Uh, very small rocks. Cider. A great gravy. Cherries. Mud. A churches. Churches. Lead. Lead. A duck. <laughs> exactly. So, logically, if she weighs the same as a duck, she's made of wood. And therefore... A witch! A witch! What you do not smell is called iocane powder. It is odorless, tasteless, dissolves instantly in liquid, and is among the more deadly poisons known to man. The Battle of Wits from The Princess Bride is an example of non sequitur because Vicini draws incorrect conclusions from his premises. All right. Where is the poison? The Battle of Wits has begun. It ends when you decide and we both drink and find out who is right and who is dead. But it's so simple. All I have to do is divine from what I know of you. Are you the sort of man who would put the poison into his own goblet or his enemies? Now, a clever man would put the poison into his own goblet because he would know that only a great fool would reach for what he was given. I'm not a great fool, so I can clearly not choose the wine in front of you. But you he assumes that because a man is smart, he would necessarily put the poison in his own cup. You've made your decision then? <laughs> Not remotely. Because Iocane comes from Australia, as everyone knows. And Australia is entirely peopled with criminals. And criminals are used to having people not trust them as you are not trusted by me, so I can clearly not choose the wine in front of you. Truly, you have a dizzying intellect. Wait till I get going! Throughout the scene, Vicini continues to make illogical conclusions that don't seem to follow or make sense. Clearly not choose the wine in front of me. You're just stalling now. You'd like to think that, wouldn't you? You've beaten my giant, which means you're exceptionally strong. So you could have put the poison in your own goblet, trusting on your strength to save you. So I can clearly not choose the wine in front of you. But you've also bested my Spaniard, which means you must have studied. And in studying, you must have learned that man is mortal. So you would have put the poison as far from yourself as possible. So I can clearly not choose the wine in front of me. You're trying to trick me into giving away something. It won't work. It has worked. You've given everything away. I know where the poison is. Then make your choice. I will, and I choose. What in the world can that be? What? Where? I don't see anything. Oh, well, I, I could have sworn I saw something. I, uh, no matter. <laughs> <laughs> What's so funny? I'll, I'll tell you in a minute. First, let's drink. Me from my class. Another, more subtle example of non sequitur in this clip is when Vicini incorrectly concludes that the cup he drinks from is not poisoned because the man in black tells him that the cup he chose was wrong, and Vicini knows that he switched the cups. He guessed wrong. You only think I guessed wrong. That's what's so funny. I switched glasses when your back was turned. Ha <laughs> ha, you fool. He fails to consider the possibility that the poison may be in both cups or neither. 
Only slightly less well-known is this. Never go in against a Sicilian when death is on the line. <laughs> Who are you? I am no one to be trifled with. That is all you ever need know. To think, all that time it was your cup that was poisoned. They were both poisoned. I spent the last few years building up an immunity to Iocane powder. One of the reasons I wanted to come here tonight was to discuss our future. Of course. I plan on running for office someday. Warner. I think we should break up. What? Oh. Legally Blonde is an example of hasty generalization because throughout the movie, many people underestimate Elle Woods purely because she's blonde. A law student. Going to Harvard is the only way I'm going to get the love of my life back. For my admissions essay, Action. I'm going to tell all of you why I'm going to make an amazing lawyer. I feel comfortable using legal jargon in everyday life. I object. Her list of extracurricular activities is impressive. She was in a Ricky Martin video. Aren't we always looking for diversity? Welcome to Harvard. Don't be scared. Everyone will love you. No? Uh, I'm sorry, are you here to see me? I go here. You got into Harvard Law? What, like it's hard? I got a PhD from Berkeley. MBA from Wharton. I've been deworming orphans in Somalia. Two weeks ago, I saw Cameron Diaz at Fred Siegel, and I talked her out of buying this truly heinous Angora sweater. <laughs> Malibu Barbie lives. I've come to join your study group. Our group is full. Oh, is this like an RSVP thing? No, it's like a smart people thing. I give her two more weeks. What is this? We're betting to see how much longer you're going to last. You're not smart enough, sweetie. I'll show you how valuable Elle Woods can be. MGM Pictures The color of her hair is not enough grounds to determine what she's capable of or her character. Which is evident at the end of the movie as she shows herself to be a dedicated law student and an intelligent person. You can buy her exercise tips on infomercials. Wait! Exercise gives you endorphins. Endorphins make you happy. Happy people just don't shoot their husbands. You're fired. What? I have new representation. Reese Witherspoon. This clip from Mean Girls is a perfect example of poisoning the well because Regina George says things about Katie in order to ruin her reputation and discredit anything that she will do or say in the future. I invited her tonight. Well, be careful because she has a huge crush on you. Really? How do you know? Because she told me. She tells everybody. It's kind of cute, actually. She's like a little girl. She like writes all over her notebook, Mrs. Aaron Samuels. And she made this t-shirt that says, I heart Aaron, and she wears it under all her clothes. Oh, come on. Well, who can blame her? I mean, you're gorgeous. And OK, look, I'm not saying she's a stalker, but she saved this Kleenex you used. And she said she's going to do some kind of African voodoo with it to make you like her. This was it. Okay, who's your daddy? Huh? I got her to agree to consider you. You're halfway in, man. Uh, um. Oh, uh, okay. Well, uh, so, so should I ask her out? No. You don't want to freak her out. You got to have a casual conversation first. Hello. Why do I get the feeling you don't do this very often? Man, I just, I'm not really good at talking to girls. Why? You're hot. What? <clears throat> you know, you're an appealing guy, man. Guy, guy man. Look, I, I don't know. This clip from She's the Man is an example of slippery slope because Viola assumes that since Duke is physically attractive, it means he should be good at talking to girls, which is not and true. You're gonna talk to me, okay? Ew, do, do I have to? Yes. Because I'm Viola. Duke, nice to meet you. Okay, that was creepy. You really just sounded like a girl just then. I used to my sister all the time. I got really good at it. Come on. Oh, by the way, 
If you'd really like to know, he went that way. In Alice in Wonderland, the Cheshire Cat uses an example of red herring because he goes from talking about which path the white rabbit took to suddenly asking Alice if she can stand on her head. Oh dear. Can you stand on your head?